but this is so abusive. And Harry is a serious abuser. And he is a serial abuser. Yes. And when you stop to think that his father has cancer, which is most likely incurable, mm. and he is doing this. Harry, let's be clear about what Harry is doing. Harry is suing his father's government. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Prince Harry pushing ahead with his court case against NGN newspapers and specifically The Sun, the newspaper I used to be executive editor, of course. I revealed earlier this week, Lady C, that I have been asked if I would give evidence based on previous witness statements that I have submitted, and I'm happy to. And I'm not doing so, Lady C, by the way, because I think that NGN's conduct in all of this scandal has been good. I mean, they absolutely did appalling, terrible things years and years and years ago where they hacked phones and all of that. But I had nothing to do with that ever. I am under oath, on record, during the Leveson inquiry, and Prince Harry has tried his awful brand of lawfare with me and my reporting in the past. As you know, he got nowhere because he was spreading lies. But if he wants to take me on in court, absolutely fine, because someone, Lady C, has to stick up for journalism a little bit and has to stick up for the fact that actually he's using this court case not because of the truth, but because he wants to enact some sort of sick revenge on his father and his brother. Well, he's also very envious and jealous. And it's not only, it's, it's, it, it's revenge because he's not going to be king. Uh, but but he's, he's, very, he's a very sick and disturbed person. And he's very disturbing. But the fact of the matter, first of all, Dan, I have to tell you, I think it's wonderful what you're doing. And secondly, may I make a very important point? Please. Harry, Harry is trying to present himself as a champion of decency when the whole situation has changed. All, all the, the improprieties that took place before have been cleaned up. So it is he is he is trying to say that he's going to change something that has already changed. He there's nothing to clean up. And indeed, I was one of I was approached when when the uh by the police to complain about the uh, uh, mirror the uh sorry the uh the sun and and the chance and I refused to do it. They had, they had, you know, my numbers and that I'd been uh, invaded, let's put it that yes. way. Uh, primarily over my children coming when I had my, got my children from Russia. And, and I refused to do it because I said, we, the price you pay for being a public figure and for having a privileged position is that there are already mechanisms in place. You can sue, you can sue for libel, etc. And to an extent, we need a free press more than we need celebrities and public figures to be protected so that they can get up to mischief in private. Totally. Exactly. I mean, it's a cost of journalism, isn't it? I've been hacked as well in the past. I, I, I've never spoken about it because... You know, Harry is using this. That is the point. Harry is using this. And it's not about the truth. And as I say, I'm, look, I mean, I have nothing to hide. That's the thing. There are probably journalists, Lady C, in fact, I know there are journalists who would do anything to avoid staying out of court because they have a lot to hide in their journalism, right? Because they did break the law. And to me, that's mm -hmm. despicable. But I have nothing to hide. I've never, ever, ever broken the law in my journalism, ever. So bring me to court, and I am more than happy to justify every single story that I've ever broken about Harry. And specifically, those stories about Harry and Meghan, by the way, were being, um, you know, fed to me, or however you want to put it. You know, I had multiple, multiple sources who were so horrified, so horrified by their behaviour. 
And these were people who were close to the late queen, people who were close to the late, uh, people who were close to the now king, people who were close to Prince William, but also people who were close to Prince Harry and Meghan themselves. And it was all legitimate journalism. I have never, ever hacked anything. I have never, ever hacked a phone ever. So you know, if 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 a journalist actually has to go in and stand up for some real journalism and and bring some home truths about Harry, I mean, look, they'll probably try and throw everything at me because it's David Sherborne who's always had an issue with me. But I've got nothing to hide. Darling, I don't think you need to worry because they tried it. Remember, David Sherborne with Byline Times and Harry and. They they tried to destroy you. They they got uh, your ex partner to to tell a whole heap of lies about you. There yes. were whole heaps of events. You know there were police investigations in Scotland and England. Yep. And you but this but this is so abusive. And Harry is a serious abuser, and he is a serial abuser. Yes. And when you stop to think that his father has cancer, which is most likely incurable, mm. and he is doing this. Harry, let's be clear about what Harry is doing. Harry is suing his father's government, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Harry is also using his father's courts, and Harry is trying to breach the, the veil of secrecy that is accepted in officialdom, where a head of state's transactions are always secret. And it, just as how journalists don't have to reveal their sources, heads of state are not supposed to reveal their sources or, or their actions either. In, as, and Harry has applied for Lord Gite and Lord Young, the former Sir Christopher mm -hmm. Gite and Sir Edward Young, both the late Queen's private secretaries. So Harry's not only going after his father, he's he's going after the late his grandmother, who he's supposed to have loved so much that that he he made the last few years of her life a total misery. And and helped to, in my opinion, shorten her life, because you know stress is not desirable when you have cancer, especially when you're in in a ninety something year old woman. It's it's outrageous if you stop to think what Harry is, is about. I am and, so, I am so and this is sorry. Man you can... Sorry, go on. Well, no, I was just going to say, I'm so glad that you have made this point because so many people seem to have missed the fact it isn't just uh, William and Charles who he is trying to embarrass. It is also the late Queen. And when you just let that sink in, I mean, these were her private communications, Lady C. These communications were not being sent by Christopher Guyte two news group newspapers and Rebecca Brooks and all, all of the executives there, they were not being sent without the Queen's approval. And the fact that Harry is, oh, it's, yeah, I, it's just sick. With the holidays creeping up faster than your aunt's fruitcake recipe, I've got something way better to share with you. If you want to look sharp for all those festive gatherings and maybe finally win that best groomed at the family dinner award, that's the one I want this year, check out the latest masterpiece from Manscaped, the Chairman Pro Electric Foil Shaver. Trust me, it's like Rudolph for your face, guiding you to a smooth, irritation-free shave. Let's dive into the goods. The Chairman Pro is armed with not one, but two interchangeable skin-safe blade heads. Think of them as your grooming superheroes. The skin-safe four-blade foil for when you want that baby's bottom smooth, and the skin-safe stubble trimmer for when you want to keep some stubble but clean it up a bit. Both keep you looking sharp while minimizing razor burn and irritation because nobody, nobody wants to show up to the holiday party looking like they lost a fight with a Christmas tree. But wait, there's more. The Chairman Pro has flex adjust technology, which is basically like the holiday miracle of shaving, okay? The Santa's elves have made it just for you. 
because the blades and pivoting head adjust to every curve of your face. It's gentle on the neck area, as if they had the gift of foresight. So go ahead, kiss that awkward jawline patch goodbye. No more pretending it doesn't exist while you hope nobody notices under the mistletoe. And if you want even more precision, on the right side of the bracket, there's a precision lock. When you lock it, the blade head sits firm so you can achieve a more precise shave. Goodness me, this will be such a great gift, right? Such a great gift. Especially because the Chairman Pro is waterproof, so you can use it in the shower, which makes it way easier to clean up. You can just rinse it under the tap. The Chairman Pro isn't just for daily shaves either. It's powerful enough to tackle up to five a day growth, making it perfect whether you're shaving every day or just tidying up after a few days. And with up to 75 minutes of runtime on a single charge, you'll have plenty of juice to go from Santa's beard to smooth as a snow angel. Sorry about that. Uh, it has a travel lock too, so it won't turn on in your bag, which is really, really handy if you want to take it on the road. So this Chairman Pro has everything you need. It is all in one box. All you have to do is head over right now to www.manscape.com and join the over 11 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. You can use the code OUTSPOKEN when you check out and you will receive 20% off your entire order and free shipping. So that's www.manscaped.com. Use the coupon code OUTSPOKEN. And... And yeah, and that is the really important thing. The Queen is no longer alive. The Queen can't defend herself. It's he has he has previously attacked her legacy by saying that the Commonwealth is Empire Point Two, two point oh, and that that it's it's basically a racist organization for for white people to suck from black people. I mean, remember on, on the, sh the Netflix show, it's, it's, it's beyond belief, the, the, the viciousness and the maliciousness with which he goes about uh, attacking people. He is a truly vicious, nasty piece of work. Yeah. And, and you, the queen is, is dead, he has he has already tried to damage her legacy in terms of the Commonwealth. And I know from Caribbean and African diplomats that it had a marked effect two, three years ago. It, it's not so effective now. And now he's trying to, to go behind her or, orchestration of dealing with real politics. The Queen was a head of state of a country that has a free press. The Queen understood as a responsible head of state that there needs to be a free press and that there has to be a symbiotic relationship yes. with some, some symbiosis, exactly. but respect and, and parameters between the, the state that which she is embodies and between the press. Exactly. There wasn't and, some shady deal. It wasn't... No. It's not how Harry is trying to present it in any way. There wasn't a shady deal. It wasn't dodgy. Quite simply, the fact is the Queen, the late Queen, knew it was completely inappropriate for her family to be engaged in an ongoing legal battle over an issue which, let's be honest, Lady C, it was criminal and it was resolved. I think sometimes people forget this. The hacking of Prince William and Prince Harry, which was completely unacceptable, totally legal, uh, totally illegal, utterly disgusting. I mean, as a journalist, I'm disgusted by anyone who would hack anyone. So that was sorted. People went to jail and the newspaper, the News of the World, which I used to work for, shut so it's not as if there were not massive ramifications, because as you also point out, Lady C, the whole way that Fleet Street and the Fourth Estate operated in this country changed as a result. Harry is trying to rewrite history and act as if there wasn't that reckoning. And he is doing it not only to try and take out his enemies in the press, he's also doing it uh, to try and embarrass his family. And it's never based on the truth with him. It's 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 like he lives in his own little world and 
David Sherbourne and Alton John have fed all of these bizarre theories into his head. But uh, thank you for calling it out, Lady C. You know, I love having you. And let's not forget, Dan, that Rupert Murdoch has paid out hundreds of millions of pounds. <laughs> Isn't it like a billion well. now? It's, it's ridiculous it, amounts of money. It, it's a, for Harry to pretend that there is any need for him to do. There's every need for him to not do what he's doing. It is the height of treachery. I was told by somebody I spoke to that the family regards it as a total betrayal. It's treacherous and that his behavior is totally unacceptable. And it it is, Harry is, Harry uses his irrationality to destroy and he wants to pretend that he is championing, that he is a dragon slayer. Well, he's not a, an age six or age, a six year old child anymore. By the time you're eight or 10, if you're a child, you're not slaying dragons anymore. But he at 40 is slaying dragons. The man is so seriously drug addled and so seriously disturbed that really this, this has the potential, depending on, on what emerges, to seriously damage the, the conduct of a, a head of state in, with, with his or her private communication, confidential is a better word, confidential communications. But totally. But he will not... There's no limit to which he will stoop in his desire to destroy the free press, embarrass his family while he's at it. And that's why, thank goodness, you're shining a light on it. Lady Colin Campbell, brilliant as ever. We will speak very soon. Oh, and of course, you don't just need to follow Lady C on X, but also on YouTube, where you get all of these pearls of wisdom multiple times a week. But I love having her as part of Outspoken too. Thank you so Thank much, you. Lady C. Thank you, darling. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching Dan Wilson Outspoken. Please click on my face just to the bottom left to subscribe to this brand new independent news source and turn on the notification bell so you'll be alerted to our brand new live shows, uncancelled interviews, and special royal episodes. Outspoken is also now available as a podcast, so you can listen to the show every weekday, on the go, wherever you are.